Are you able to see the potential in a distressed property? Would you like to walk a potential fixer with me? Well, let's go. Hello, YouTube viewers. My name is Eric Pinkney, owner of Pinkney Estates. If this is our first time meeting, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel for weekly real estate investing content. Okay, so today I have a goodie for you. Um, we are going to be walking a fixer upper property uh, here in Durham, North Carolina. So the address is 6803 Russell Road here in Durham. It is a three bedroom, two bath, a little over a thousand square feet, built in 1983. It's only been on the market for a day um, and it is listed for $209,000. So we're gonna walk the property. I'm gonna tell you what I'm looking for and I'm gonna point out the huge red flags if there are any and yeah, give you some tips and tricks along the way. Let's get it. All right, there she is from the outside. According to the listing agent, they ripped up all the floors and uh, disposed of all the junk that was in the house. So that's why that dumpster is there. Three bedroom, two bath. Now from here, if you look closely, it looks like the roof is in good shape. So you don't see any shingles popping up or any holes or nothing crazy. So that's a good sign. So the property has wood siding. Hopefully there's no water damage. From here, the windows look okay. But I always like to make my homes energy efficient. So I would probably replace those. Got a nice front porch. You could fit a couple of rocking chairs up there. Or maybe a little couple swing. All right, in we go. Uh, front door, the front glass door is a little dated, but we can work with that. All right, so we are walking straight into the living room. Okay, so as I mentioned before, the seller ripped up the floors. You know, it's a blank canvas. You know, you can put laminate, carpet, anything you want in here. Okay. What I don't like is the wooden trim. That is hideous. And to complement the wood trim is a burgundy strip of paint all around the living room. And look at the front windows. You got wooden blinds and wood trim around the windows. So um, they were all about their wood. Okay, so this is pretty simple. Um, oh, and the, the ceiling. Yeah, we need to scrape that off as well. Every time you renovate a home, you want to make sure that your ceilings are smooth. Unless you want to rent out the home, then you wanna do as least renovations as possible, but you know, you have to make it livable and you know, nice and neat. Okay, so we got the ceiling. We got the trim. We got paint, obviously. Possibly a new glass door, but uh, I'll keep it. And the flooring for the living room. All right, now we mosey on into the kitchen. Let's do a quick span. All right, you got your washer and dryer in the kitchen. 
They have a little bar stool area here. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know. I'm kind of liking it right now. What do you think? You want to try to keep the original footprint of the house. Now, what you don't want to do is knock down too many walls uh, because I know we love open concept, but when you tear down a wall, you're going to have to build a new support system like beams and extra studs and all of that stuff. So the cabinets, I like the cabinets. Okay, they're wood cabinets. Um, I would probably paint them if possible and then put new hardware on the cabinets. Now this fridge, it's working, but uh, no, that's not, that's not appealing at all. Here's what you may not know about refrigerators. Refrigerators are considered personal property. So if you walk into a flip or a new construction and you don't see the refrigerator, that's why. It's personal property. Okay, now the countertops. Yeah, we're definitely gonna replace that. Uh, the sink, it looks okay. You could possibly clean it up. You don't wanna replace uh, anything that still looks good, you know? Um, now, if that was outdated, then yeah, we'll definitely get rid of that. Okay, although this is stainless steel, you know, it looks kind of worn here at the flat top. So might replace this, sell it, you know, recoup some of that money, get a new stainless steel stove. All right, now the Frigidaire microwave. That still looks like it's in good condition, so we may keep that. All right, and I'll probably get rid of this little cubby here because it's taken away from the space at the back door. You don't wanna walk right into that shelving there. All right, behind door number one, the electrical panel looks like it's been updated. All right, and labeled. Okay, that's good. So far, this property is looking like a lipstick job. Um, so lipstick meaning uh, a quick um, cosmetic update and you'll be in and out in less than a month. Lipstick jobs are my fave. Now in here, I have to get rid of this hideous vinyl flooring and we'll probably put tile down all the way down the hall and in the bathroom. Now this is a pretty decent tile here in this bathroom, but we want it to flow with the rest of the flooring, the new flooring. Uh, that is old school right there. The square tiles, we're gonna rip all of that out. The actual tub looks okay, so we can probably reface that. But those tile squares, we're gonna rip all that down and then put up some brand new tile and we'll go all the way up to the ceiling. The vanity looks okay. Uh, it's white. And the medicine cabinet is also white, so we'll probably keep that. And the light fixtures don't look too bad either. But we'll definitely replace this mirror there. It's a, just a big square, that's it. It's pretty dull. All right, so moseying on down the hall. And we're gonna enter into bedroom number one. Again, they ripped up all the carpets. Looks like they had a little spill there, but nothing major. So we're gonna do some new carpet in here, uh, like a one inch pad. So the carpet and pad will be nice and soft underneath your feet. And we're gonna scrape the ceiling and remove the trim here as well. 
All right, and bedroom number two, pretty much the same. Now this bedroom has two windows. The other one had one, but strip down to the plywood. Okay, and you need to scrape the ceiling and replace the trim and paint, of course. The whole interior is gonna be painted. I like the sign here in the room. Welcome to the vibe room. No bad vibes. I like that. Cool, now we're going into the master. Okay, nice and bright in here. Blank canvas for flooring. That looks like a huge spill or a leak. Um, and it looks like the floor is a little bit soft around the, the vent there. And the floor is defense, the window is wide open. Like this was wide open when I got here. So, I mean, it rained a few times last week. It's been raining sideways, uh, you know, because of the tropical storms and all that stuff. So, yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and do them a favor and close this window. But yeah, see, it's, I don't wanna push too hard, but yeah, that's nice and soft there, so. Probably need some new plywood there and check underneath to make sure that there's no moisture under the house. Here is the master closet. Not big, but you know, it's a small house, so. We take what we can get. All right, into the master bath. Okay, the toilet looks okay. So we'll keep the toilet. Uh, the color is too dark in here. So I'm gonna brighten up the bathroom by using a lighter color. Now they used some good tile in this bathroom. So we'll just clean the grout uh, or regrout it. Just make it look fresh. Uh, definitely regrout around the base of the uh, toilet. Uh, your medicine cabinet and mirror. So we're definitely gonna put a nicer mirror there. Um, oh, this is kind of awkward though. I mean, I wanted to reconfigure it, but man, like look, you have no foot space. So if I wanted to put that on the opposite wall, I mean, where would I stand? Where would you stand? Where would anybody stand? This may take some creative thinking. But if you wanted to keep that itty bitty vanity, um, you should at least change the mirror. Yeah, that's pretty small. And the shower, the shower looks good too. Now th this is tough, it's really small in here, but I mean, there's a lot of nice finishes. And like I said, we're flipping regular houses. We're not flipping mansions. So, I mean, if it works, it works. Don't try to force it, you know? But yeah, we can work with that. And of course, the wood trim and the ceiling. We're gonna work on that, get rid of the wooden blinds, paint. The whole room is like taupe or baby brown it's it's not appealing at all so far it's a lipstick job like nothing crazy okay we're gonna look at the bath again look at the kitchen again what i was saying about the refrigerator the same thing goes for the washer and dryer so when you go to new construction properties or flip properties and you don't see a washer and dryer, it is because they are considered personal property. So you don't want to add those to a flip. I mean, you wanna save as much money as possible. Let the buyers provide their own washer and dryer and refrigerator. 
Yeah, okay, so we're gonna go out the back here. Actually, it's a side door, but whatever. Okay, so remember what I was saying about the wood siding. It, this is why I don't like wood siding. You see that coming off there? Like that's, there's gonna be a lot of panels that need to be replaced. But so far, it's not, it's not too bad. But if you had to replace siding on a house completely, uh, I would definitely go with masonite. It's durable, weather tested. It's my fave. Okay, so we'll definitely have to do some, a uh, little bit of wood replacement and some paint on the side. Okay, look at this backyard, like it's, it's a lot of privacy, don't you think? Got a little homemade fire pit there with a couple chairs. Okay, and that over there, ladies and gentlemen, is your septic tank. Now, this home is permitted for three bedrooms. The roof looks good on the back too. And it looks fairly new. That makes me smile because that would have been like a six to eight thousand dollar job right there all right looks like they had a big dog back here okay we can clean that up and get rid of the junk and make it look nice here's the shed all right just do some decluttering and maybe put a new door on there it's kind of chipping at the bottom that's not expensive at all and the gutter system is new too that looks good that keeps water out of your house okay so the big ticket items are the roof the hvac and underneath the house now looks like they have a goodman unit and it's fairly new this is a lipstick job ladies and gentlemen like this is nice it was nice and cool on the inside. The electricity's still on, so that's good. So we're not rolling the dice on the heating and air and the crawl space. Okay, so first thing I see when I open the crawl space is a drain system. So they are really savvy when it comes to water intrusion. Okay, they got a water softener here. That's good. We had a vapor barrier, which is worn out. And it's also used for protection from water intrusion. All right, don't think I can, you guys can see that, but the water heater is underneath the house. Now, from what I can tell, where I am squatting, it does not have a drip pan underneath, but that's an easy fix. Oh, the insulation looks good down here, but some of it is falling. So we need to get a good contractor in here. The main thing you wanna check for underneath the house is that it is nice and dry. You don't wanna see standing water underneath the house i'm liking this house this is an in and out job this will not be on the market for long i can tell you that wow um i'm satisfied if my money was not tied up in another project right now i'll be all over this but yeah three bedroom two bath Listed for 209, built in 1983, lipstick job. I like it. What do you guys think? Now, I am approaching this opportunity with the 70% rule. Now let's go to the board and break all this down. Okay, so the list price is $209,000. Now, after I did a market analysis on the property, I've determined that the after repair value 
should be around 250. So ARV is at the repair value. The estimated repairs after I walk through the property is between 20 and $30,000. Now, if you personally know some good contractors, which are very hard to find, but yeah, always treat them right, always keep them around, take them out to lunch. A good contractor is hard to find, believe me. Now, um, those good contractors are not gonna hit you over the head too much, okay? Meaning they're not gonna charge well above like retail. You know, you know them on a personal level, so they're gonna hook you up. Okay, so $20,000 if you have some good contractors, but worst case scenario, it shouldn't be more than $30,000. Now this is a lipstick job, meaning we can get in and out quickly and profit, okay? So uh, the 70% rule, you take 250, the after repair value, multiply it by 70%, and then you got 175. Now, from that 175, you want to subtract your repairs. Now, I went worst case scenario at $30,000. So, 175 minus $30,000. My maximum offer is going to be 145. Okay, now, if you haven't seen uh, my 70% video, 1% uh, and 50% video, the link to that video is in the description below. Now, sometimes the 70% rule don't always work. Sometimes you have to take it a step further um, to get the bigger picture. So, now let's break it all the way down. So we're gonna go over here, same scenario, after repair value 250. Now, the sellers always pay realtor commissions, okay? so. And this is after you fix it up and put it on the market. So it's about 5%. So 5% of 250 is 12.5. Okay. Now the rehab budget again is $30,000 and a contingency of $5,000. Now, um, I like to overestimate uh, when I'm going after properties because you would rather go over than under, if that makes sense but um, always have a contingency with all of your projects. So I have a $5,000 contingency. That's just in case anything goes wrong or some unexpected charges arise. So now the next item is the closing costs, um, which is about $5,500. Now that's closing costs for buying and closing costs for selling. And again, I'm kind of overshooting this. All right, so that comes down to an all-in total of $197,000, $197,000. Okay, now from there, you know, we're not using the 70% rule. We're just subtracting everything we just added up here from the 250, okay? Now, the next step is your desired profit, okay? So if your desired profit is $30,000, then just subtract that from the 197 and then your offer would be 167. Now, that is not the same as the 70% rule. This is more like a 78% rule. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm good with $30,000, especially for a lipstick job. What do you think? Going back again, so now I still wanna get as much profit as possible, so I'm gonna offer that 145 first. And then, you know, if there's a little back and forth, then I'm not going above 167 if I want a profit of $30,000. Now, if you are good with a profit of $20,000, then okay, offer 177. It's all about what you desire and profit. It's time for the toasty tip of the day, but this time I'm giving something away. So it's a toasty giveaway. Toasty! If you are a checklist person like me, I have a tool that will help you cover all areas of a fixer-upper. Now in the description below is a link to a punch list, a top to bottom punch list for distressed properties. You're welcome. That concludes this week's video. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button, like this video, and share with your mom and them. See you next time. Woo!